Um, Daniel chapter number 1, and we're going to read the first eight verses of Dan, uh, here in Daniel. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, and the king's seed, and other princes. And children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, and understanding science, and as such had the ability to them to stand in the king's palace, and whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. Now among those were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hanai, Meshiel, and Azariah, and unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names, for he gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar, and to Hanai, Shadrach, and to Meshel, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for your word. Lord, we're thankful again to be here tonight. Lord, we're thankful to be into your house. Lord, we're thankful to live in a place where we have the freedom to come out here and worship you. Lord, we're thankful for all those that have gone before us. Lord, not only uh, uh, Christian men and women, Lord, that just stood for the faith, but even those that have just defended our country and defended our land. Lord, that we have this freedom here tonight. Lord, we ask you to be with all those who couldn't be here, those that are traveling, those that are in Brother Rocky's, Lord. You ask you just watch over and help them. Ask you just meet with us here tonight. Lord, help me with what you've laid upon my heart. Lord, help me give it here to your people the same way you gave it to me. Lord, it be a strength and encouragement to all of us here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first thing I want to look at is we see in verse number one, uh, we see the, you know, just the needed information here that we have. We get to where a lot of times we just go through and, and we'll read the Bible, but there's an importance to studying, and we'll get to that in a little bit later on. But we see that it, it's important each time you start off, if you can get a good study Bible at the beginning of these books, a lot of times they'll tell you uh, when it was written by, when it was written and who wrote it. And sometimes we'll even divide them up into certain uh, 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 sections of each book or whatever it may be. But we see here that the needed info that we have in verse number one, talking about how in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim and, and Nebuchadnezzar come, and that's going to that's gonna set up the whole book of Daniel and knowing and you'll see so much about Nebuchadnezzar uh, in the coming chapters here of Daniel. So we see the needed info in verse number 1. But I want you to notice the noticeable difference in verse number 2. And the Lord gave, a, gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand with part of the vessels of the house of God. Now if you have the right Bible, which I'm hoping everybody does here, you see that God should be capitalized, G-O-D, into the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar to the house of his God, little G-O-D. So we see, obviously, right now we got a conflict. We know one of these was going to the house of God, and the other one was going to the house of his God. He had his own gods uh, that he was worshiping here that we see. And we see that then they go through, and they're, they're taking these people, and they're taking these children, and they're wanting to get these children to raise them up in, in the Babylonian reign, or Babylonian customs here, and we see that they will nourish them in verse number 5. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end thereof they might stand before the king. So they took these kids, and they would take, and they would nourish them, and try to raise them up, and one of the things that they would start off doing also outside of nourishing, them is we see in verses number six and seven is we would see the name change we would see they would go through and change their name and we see uh, we all know the story but and hopefully we ever bought here on a Wednesday night knows where Shadrach Meshach and Abednego came from it came from these three boys right here uh, when their name was changed why would they do that well, it would help them to get used to living in that Babylonian culture. They would change their name. They would get used to that Babylonian name. They would get used to trying to live that way, so they would give them a different name. And we even see, and if you know, and if you go through and study, you know that uh, you see the names of them being used for the rest of the chapter, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, whereas Daniel continues to use Daniel. He continues to use his name. Why? Well, it all started right here. In verse number 8, when we see Daniel just says, No, 
But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. Sometimes it would do us good when we say no at the beginning. I'm not trying to be uh, sound cruel or anything like that, but why are we in the condition that we are in as a country? Because we didn't say no, Brother Charlie, from the beginning. We would continually just allow things and say, well, that's okay, and, and if you'll just, you can do that, just don't involve me. You can keep that to yourself, don't involve us, and, and you can do this and do that, and all of a sudden now you see certain things that are just running rampant across our country. Why? Because we wouldn't make a stand and say no from the beginning. That, you know, I, I've said this even over at the jail this past Sunday, uh, young people, something to think about as you continue to grow up, you go through your teen years, you might go out to that first party, you might go out to the, over that first friend's house that might not believe the same way you do, and it is amazing, I've never met anybody over at jail that was an alcoholic or a drug addict that said as a little kid that's what they desired to grow up and be, Brother Donald. None of them said, hey, my, my, my whole goal is to grow up and to be an alcoholic. No, it starts because somewhere along the line, they wasn't willing to say no. Somewhere along the line, we wasn't willing to stop and just say no that first time. And when we said, uh, okay, or I can give in just this little bit or just that little bit, it eventually grows into something far beyond what we ever intended it to be. And that's where you'll get yourself in trouble. You have to be willing, like Daniel was here, to say no from the beginning. He had purposed in his heart to say no in the beginning. I don't know about anybody else, Brother Ray, but I started getting hot all of a sudden, so I'm going to have to unbutton something here. I'm about to fry. So what I want to preach on is that's that right there found in verse number 8. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. And I will ask that simple question of you tonight. Do you purpose? Do you purpose? Daniel, it wasn't that he just accidentally decided to do this. He purposed in his heart he was not, he did not want to do this. And he began, he found favor with the eunuchs and found favor with all these people. Uh, you can see if you go on to read the rest of chapter number one, and hopefully you know the stories of how some of the rest of it turns out. But how many things or what, if anything, do we purpose in our heart? This is what I am going to do. It doesn't matter what comes against me. It doesn't matter what the devil throws at me. It doesn't matter what happens to me between here and there. This is what I'm going to do. Nothing's going to stand in my way. Can I say first off, I mentioned this a little bit earlier, do you purpose in your heart to study? We have a, uh, a lot of people that are willing to read. Do we purpose in our heart to study. I remember we had some ladies over to jail, excuse me, that was coming faithfully. I'm assuming that they're, they're not there anymore. Uh, I believe a couple of them might have been people that were uh, uh, the opportunity or chance or whatever you want to say. Uh, they were going to end up being deported back to the home country. But I remember the one lady coming in uh, after a few weeks and she had gotten saved and, and she said, Brother Clint, she goes, I sat down and I want to study. But it's just so hard, Brother Jim. She goes, I'll go to fall asleep, and I'll start doing this, and start doing that. I'm like, well, if it was going to be easy, everybody would do it. Sometimes it's going to be hard. The devil's going to, you know, you can set through it. How many of us, you've set through, and your phone's not ringing all day, and you sit down to study, and all of a sudden your phone don't stop? You know, and your phone never rings otherwise. The kids haven't bothered you all day. They've been in a room playing video games. Didn't even know if you was home until you sat down to study. And then all of a sudden, Mom, make this. Dad, do this. Whatever it may be. But we need to purpose in our heart sometime to study. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. How many times do we try to replace study with read? There is nothing wrong with reading. I encourage you to read your Bible every single day. Even if it is a single verse in the morning when you start off your day, that might get you through the day. It might be something somebody else needs. You have no idea. But how much do we purpose in our heart to study? That no matter how busy I get, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to study something tonight. Or I'm going to study uh, whether it be a subject, whether it be a person, whether it be a word, whatever it may be. But we, we seem to have that lack of Christian, I, I, I don't know if you want to say character or whatever you want to say in today's society. Why? Because we haven't spent the time studying. And Christians haven't continued to grow the way that we should. You know, you, we had one of the, what, in my opinion, one of the best opportunities to possibly study and get closer and closer to God here about three years ago than we'll probably ever have in our life. How many of us was stuck at home? 
How many of us was stuck inside for however long it might have been? You might have been two weeks, might have been four weeks, might have been six weeks. You're sitting in the home, nothing to do. And, and too many times, what did most of us end up doing? We remodeled a kitchen, we remodeled a bathroom, we made a new driveway, we put in a storage shed, we took up new hobbies, we did all these things. How much time and effort did we put into studying God's Word to try to get closer to Christ? Do we truly know anything more about the Bible now than we did three years ago? Do we purpose in our heart to study? Do we purpose in our heart to surrender? John chapter 3 tells us, we know this verse, He must increase, but I must decrease. How often are we willing to just surrender to God and say, God, whatever it is you want me to do, here I am. Each and every day, God, whatever it is you want me to do today, here I am. We seem to think that it's up to the, the preacher or, or a missionary or something of that nature in order to surrender. Well, they, they've got to go out on the field or they've got to go do this or they're going to call the pastor or whatever it may be. But it, we should purpose in our heart to surrender every single day to him. Why? Because the Bible tells us in Matthew 26, 41, Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit in it is, indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. It is a everyday battle you get out there in the world to have to fight to stay where we need to be with the Lord. You will be faced with, and it could be something as simple as somebody cutting you off. It can, it can be a, a vast array of things that will try to get us off track. We must be willing and purpose in our heart to surrender to Him on a daily basis. It amazes me sometimes how we just uh, will we'll go through our everyday walk and we never give a second thought to truly surrendering to God and seeing how God could use us. If we would wake up every day and take that attitude of John 3.30, that if we would decrease and He must increase, who knows how God could use us in a day? You know, I've, I'm afraid, this just, this just me, Xander, I'm afraid too many times we think to be used of God, we've got to be a great preacher, or we've got to be a great missionary, or we've got to be this. Or we gotta... No, it might be you just might be the one to change your neighbor's life. It might be you the one to change that co-worker's life. It might be the one that, that a co-worker somewhere sees you go outside in your car and set and practice a song, and they might walk by and hear you singing and think, man, here they are, they're singing about God in the middle on their lunch break. That might, you, you have no idea who may be watching. You have no idea who may be listening to those things and watching your life and the effect that that could have if we would truly purpose in our heart to surrender to Him. Do we purpose to study? Do we purpose to surrender? Do we purpose to speak to others? Not only just share the gospel, but even just to speak to others. How often do we walk down the road and walk past somebody in Kroger or Walmart or over at the Home Depot or whatever it may be, and we won't even look people in the eye, Brother Jim. You won't even look at them and smile. You know, I've heard, I've heard our pastor say, I've heard Brother Doug say before, just look at people and smile, they'll think you're up to something. You know, if nothing else. Why? Because most people walk around like this. They don't even want to make eye contact. You never know when you might make eye contact and, and what kind of conversation that might strike up. You, you might look at and they might, might be, if you look up too, it might be, hey, somebody you recognize from somewhere. But how much do we purpose to speak to others? How much do we purpose, fourthly, to strive to be better? I'm going to stick right here for just a little while. I've seen this this past week. And some of you might have even seen the same thing. I don't know. There was a baseball player, I guess, that shared something on social media that his wife, Brother Ed, was coming to meet him and watch him play baseball. And his wife was traveling, and I don't remember the age of the kids. I believe the kids were like five and two. And then she was 22 weeks pregnant. And she's on this airplane, and I guess the five-year-old had some popcorn, Brother Ray. And as most five-year-olds would probably tend to do, made a rather big mess underneath the seat. There is a bunch of popcorn under the seat. And the, 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 the stewardess, I believe, on the airplane, Brother Jim, made the mother get down and clean it up. So, I, I got to thinking, and you can have a wide array of things that you can see and that you could see wrong with this situation. I, I can say, you know, I can try to be the, the good parent. Well, she should never let her kid make a mess like that. Well, you... you I can't imagine 22 weeks pregnant, 5-year-old and a 2-year-old, and you're going to have complete control over them eating popcorn. You know, but some people took that attitude. Some people took the attitude he shouldn't have even shared on social media. I'd agree with that, but it is what it is. 
And then some people, you know, that the stewardess was completely wrong, that she should have cleaned it up. And all those things could, in a vacuum, could be true. And this past week, Brother Ray, I heard something. I believe it was last week when I seen this. And last week I heard something, somebody say something, that just really, really struck me and has stuck with me ever since. Not a single person sitting around her, Brother Bob, offered to help her clean it up. A plane full of people and not a single person offered to help clean it up. Why can't we just strive to be better? Why can't we just strive to be a better human being? Because sometimes if we would just strive to be a better human being, who knows what kind of effect that might have on somebody. You know, you being willing to just pick something up and clean up some popcorn might strike up a conversation that might lead you to be able to share the gospel with her. You have no idea, you know, Brother Donald. But too many times we have it in our, in our little minds that we, we just can't be a nice person. Like, why can't we just strive to be better? Just purpose it in our heart to be better. Look, uh, I'm not, don't, don't ask questions, okay? I'm just going to share this because God put it on my heart. For whatever reason, I started having this burning sensation in my leg. I mentioned this last time when we was at our men's meeting. I don't know, the burning sensations kind of went away, but I decided, you know what, Brother Bob, I hadn't been to the doctor in five years. Maybe I should go. So I go to the doctor. Well, of course, they send me for blood work. Of course, that blood work, Brother Donald, comes out just a little bit off. So that little bit off means uh, we want you to cut out sugar and carbs. That's not happening. But we have strived to do better. All the way to the point that, all the way to the point that I walked in here, the, the sun, was it the, um, I believe, I don't remember when it was now, was it the Sunday after the Easter egg hunt, or maybe it was the Wednesday after the Easter egg hunt, and there was all kinds of chocolate candy on that back table. And I grabbed two pieces of candy, and I was ready to eat, and I walked in here, Miss Cinda, and Miss Guy told Miss Kathy, I said, you want this? I said, I can't eat this. I said, I'm not supposed to have this. And I have strived to do better. I have done a little bit better. You know, I have, even in this, those few weeks, but Don, I've lost like six pounds. I, but sometimes we just have to purpose it in our mind. I don't, I, I love sugar too much to give it up. But we just, I've strived to just try to do better. Try to be smarter about things that I do. Why can't we just do that overall in life? Why is it that we find it so hard to just be a nice person? You know, it's amazing to me. You, have you ever called somebody or text somebody, Brother Jim, and they don't get back to you, then they finally get back to you like six hours later, and they're like, well, I thought you was going to want me to do this. Well, what does that matter? Just tell me no. Don't just completely ignore me. Like, I, like, I don't understand. Like, but why can't we just purpose it in our heart to strive to be better? You have people that, that deal with enough darkness in this world, seeing a little bit of light might just help. That same gentleman that, that, that I talked about that made the comment about seeing nobody to pick it up, he also told a story about that he was in his home and he was driving home one night, for, uh, driving home from wherever, and he said it's pouring down rain and he sees an old elderly man on his scooter and his scooter got off the road and was stuck in the mud and he watched one car after another just fly by him and not bother to get off and help him. He said he finally got to where he could pull over and got out from behind a stoplight and got over and helped him. Why can't we just strive to be better? What kind of world could, what kind of change could we make if we just tried to be a better person? If we just tried to be a better Christian? If we just purposed it in our heart, you know what? Today, when that person cuts me, I heard, th here, I'll, I'll share this story. I was going to say this. I heard this story today. Uh, uh, Brother Charlie, this guy said that he was out this past, I believe it was this past Sunday, and this person is not saved. He's not a Christian, not any, by any stretch of the imagination. He said he was going out this past Sunday, and he was going out to do something, and he pulled out in the road, and he was up here in uh, the Newport Shopping Center and, and pulled out, and he said, and all of a sudden, here comes this car, Brother Rod, come flying up behind him, got rod in his uh, uh, bumper, and just started cussing on him and, and giving him and telling him he was number one and all kinds of things. So he stopped, stopped his car, put it in park, said he walked back, asked the guy, says, is something wrong? He said, the guy, yeah, you, you pulled out in front of me. He said, I didn't, you're flying. I didn't pull out in front of you. He goes, sir, it seems like you're having a bad day. Is there anything I can do to help your day, make your day a little bit better? But, well, that would be tough to be that kind of attitude when somebody's telling us those things. But why couldn't we just try to be better? 
That is the first thing we will do, all of us. I don't want to say all of us. I'm just as guilty as anybody. Somebody cuts us off or somebody does something or somebody wants to tell us we're number one. We want to give it back to them. We really do. But what if we just strive to be better? What if we just purposed it in our heart? You know what? That person just cut me off. I'm not going to yell at him. I'm not going to. I've said this. I'm sure I've shared this before. One of the first, I believe I, I might have even been talking to Miss Tina the first time it happened. Bella's riding with her somewhere and somebody pulls out in front of her and Bella bursts out. Idiot! <laughs> She's been riding my dad too much. Time for dad to watch what he's saying. Why can't we just purpose to be better? Why can't we just purpose to strive to be a better human being? Why don't we just purpose for supplication? How many of you, don't blurt it out, don't say anything, anything like that. How many of you know who was on the prayer calendar today? Who remembers who they prayed for yesterday? Has anybody looked on who's on there tomorrow? Do we purpose it in our heart to pray for our church family? Do we purpose it in our heart to truly pray and try to get a hold of God for our church family or even those lost that we say that we want to pray about? Do we truly make it a point that say, you know what, no, I'm not, I'm not going to just sit down. Lord, you know all those that are sick at church. Pray for them, help them, meet with us on Sunday. Amen. Hopefully that's not our prayer life. Hopefully it's a little bit stronger than that. But do we purpose in our hearts to make sure uh, it doesn't matter how busy I am today, I have th this person's on the calendar, th this person, I know they're going through this, and I know Miss Mary's still having treatments, and I know that Sister Marcy's still recovering, and I know this person's still facing some things, and going. And I'm going to make sure that by, before the day is over, I'm going to get to my quiet place, and I'm going to pray and seek God on their behalf. Not seek God on something I want, not, but seek God on their behalf. Truly make supplication for those that I need to make supplication for. How much do we truly know? How serious are we in our prayer for others? How serious do we take those things? And I'm not, look, she, she only paid me $20 to say this, okay? But Miss Michelle, I'm sure, put a lot of work into those calendars. Do we pay attention to them? I love it. I think it's wonderful. I was so grateful. I, 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 don't know who, I don't know who paid her to have our name on there at first, the first one she did back last month, but I counted a blessing to be on there and know that your church family's praying for you. I counted a blessing on there. We have ours hung right on the side of the refrigerator. Uh, every time I go in there, I make sure I look. So trust me, you, if your name's on there, you get seen a lot by me anyway. But how much do we truly take that and purpose it in our heart to pray for our church family? If our church family is counting on you to pray for them, they're counting on you to get through to heaven, are they going to be disappointed? If you're the prayer that's got to get through, are they going to be disappointed? Or are they going to get their prayer met because they know that you are a person, that you are doing everything you can to get hold of God? You are doing what you can to see that God meets their prayers. And let me say this lastly. I understand completely the type of church that we have. I understand completely the things that get done at our church. And I am so thankful to be a part of a church that just, that just gives. But do you purpose in your heart to step up and do for Him? Not do for the church. Not do for the pastor because we love our pastor. Our pastor but to truly do for Him. I'm going to... I'm going to come over and I'm going to help Brother Ray mow the yard because I want to do something for the Lord. I'm going to come and I want to be a part of Christ for the Caribbean because I love the Lord. I want to come and see if there's anybody that needs help cleaning the church because I love the Lord. To step up and do for Him. In Matthew chapter number 6 and verses 19 through 20, verses we all probably know uh, even almost by heart. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust thus corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break nor steal. Can I say with the exception of those two little babies in here, and that's only if they live to a ripe old age of 100, our pastor has said this many times and it is true for each and every one of us in here. Whether the Lord comes back or whether we pass on into eternity, a hundred years from now, all that's going to matter is what we've done for him. Not what we've done for the church, not what we've done for the pastor, not what we've done for anybody else, but what we have done for Him. Do we purpose in our heart to step up and truly do something for Him? 
Not just give something half-heartedly because, hey, I want to take part, so, so I'm just going to do this and, and, and just go and do something haphazardly, but truly give all that we have for him. Because if you remember, if you was here on Sunday night and you listened to the verses that our pastor read at the end before we partook of the Lord's Supper, you see what he did for you. And that should break your heart, and that should cause you to want to say, you know what, anything that I can do for him, if it is coming in here and vacuuming the floor, if it is getting the glass of water, if it is opening the door, if it's printing the bulletin, if it's whatever it is, if I can do something for him, I want to do it with all I got. But too many times we'll do something because, and I'm not saying, you know, I, I believe wholeheartedly our pastor would want this. I believe sometimes we do it because we want to do it for the church or we want to do it for the pastor or we want to make the church look good or what you know we should do it for him those should all be secondary to wanting to do something for him do we purpose in our heart to step up and do for him do we put the same kind of effort in doing things for the lord that we do at work do we put the same type of effort in doing things for the lord that we put into our hobbies if there's something else that we enjoy doing, and, and boy, we'll put all kinds of time into practice and get better and, and, and do this or do whatever it may be, do we do that same thing for the things of God? Do we put that same kind of effort into it? Do we put in it, you, you, you can't come and practice mowing the yard, but do you pay attention if Brother Ray tells you to come back here and mow the yard? Do you make sure you don't miss a spot? Do you make sure you get everything? Do you make sure you do everything you're supposed to do? Or do we just say, ah, it's just the backyard of the church. We'll just go through here and mow. As long as I don't tear anything up, it'll be good. Now, I don't believe anybody does that. I hope they don't do that. I don't know, Brother Ray. Maybe somebody does. But some, too many times, you see the effort that we will put into everything outside of here. Do we put forth the same type of effort, everything inside of here? And look, I said, we have a great church. We have a wonderful, awesome church that wants to give. And, and, and uh, there's no doubt that there's still things that can be done. There are still things that we could do. There are still things that, that could st people step up and do. I have, I, I have only had, and, and, I, and I, I, we, I had this conversation with Brother Phil, and, and look, don't step up and ask to do this just because I'm saying it, okay? Brother Tony mentioned, I believe it might have been the first week or the second week, I don't remember when it was, uh, a visitation talking about uh, uh, stuff, in, stuff in the bags. And I said, hey, we, we got plenty to start off with. We'll be good for a while. And I don't want to ask anybody else to do it because that's what Sister Mary loves to do. But we're slowly closer and closer, getting closer and closer to having to have somebody possibly do it because we're getting closer to running out. Just a few more weeks. I've... I, 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 not had anybody come and say, hey, do you need any help with any of that stuff? I know Miss Mary, you know, she's going through treatments or anything like that. Women, has, have you asked Brother Doug, hey, Brother Doug, is there anything that somebody at church was doing that now, you know, that I could possibly do? Has anybody, has anybody had a, a burden yet to step up? And, and maybe you have. If you have, I've not talked to him. But step up and, and plan maybe the, the month trip for the seniors or, or plan an outing for the middle-aged people or whatever it may be. Has anybody reached out and asked Josh and Brittany, is there anything you guys are going to need in June? You know, I can't go. Uh, I don't have any kids going, but is there anything I can do to help? You know, whatever it may be. Do we purpose in our heart to step up and do for him because of everything that he's done for us? Daniel was able to accomplish what Daniel accomplished in the rest of this book. And you see how God used Daniel, all because at right here in verse number 9, Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor his wine that he drank. He purposed in his heart, this is who I am going to be. We even see a few chapters later, if you know, when he knows that the decree is signed. He knows that King Nebuchadnezzar has signed that decree that if he is to pray, he's going to be thrown in the lion's den. He didn't do it out of spite. He didn't do it to be seen. He did it because that's what he was going to do to God was he was going to pray. And he got on his knees and he prayed the same as he did every single day. Daniel purposed in his heart. He didn't care what decree was signed. He didn't care what was going to happen. This is what I do every day, and this is what I'm going to do again today, and the consequences will be what the consequences will be. And we know what the consequences were. The Lord shut up the lion's mouth. Do we have that same purpose in our heart that Daniel did? Do we have that same resolve that Daniel did? 
that this is what I am going to do. This is, it doesn't matter what happens today, I'm going to be a better Christian. I'm going to make sure I'm praying for my church family. I'm going to make sure that I spend time in prayer. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do something for him today. Ask Brother Clint if you would just come and get your guitar and pick something. I'll ask you all to stand. We'll invite you to come and pray. Do you purpose? Do you purpose in your heart to be the Christian that God wants you to be? Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.